of Threnodes and Roses, written by Quiet, adapted for audio by Adversaria. Episode 1, Someone to Watch Over Me. Christine! Hi, Meg. See you guys next time. Bye, Craig. Good luck on your test, Rachel. You look lonely over here sitting by yourself. I should have introduced you to them. They're in my scene class. Craig is hilarious with some of the things that he draws up. I doubt I would have had much to say to them. I'm exhausted today. You worked the late shift again? Yeah, I wasn't supposed to, but Daniel couldn't find anyone else. Besides, it's extra money, and I need it with increased intuition. Well, don't work too hard. School's fun, but hardly worth it. That's easy for you to say, considering you don't pay for it. How many times have you switched majors? Only three. But hey, I think theater is gonna stick this time. By the way, have you declared a major yet? I know you were still thinking about it last spring. Yeah, I think I'm going with a bachelor's in music education. That's what the advisor recommended, at least. So what exactly do you want to do with that? I... I guess I teach other people about music. Like a music teacher at school? I remember my insane music teacher in elementary school. She had a new hat for every day of the year. I doubt I want to teach kids. Actually, I really don't know what I want to do with it. I love music and singing, but... I don't know if I can perform again. Well, you'll figure it out soon. So, me and some of the girls from my choreography club are getting together this afternoon. The auditions for Showboat are coming up and we're all trying out. You're welcome to come with us. We always need an audience. No, I have some work to get done. Have fun, though. I'll call you after work this evening if Mrs. Valerius doesn't need help with anything back home. She hasn't been feeling well lately. Call me if you can, then. I'll see you tomorrow anyway. Bye! Oh, Meg, you dropped... Uh... Auditions for Showboat. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Apollo Hotel. How can I help you tonight? Good evening, miss. I would like one bedroom for three nights. Non-smoking, if you have it. Of course, sir. Could I get your last name, please? I... Uh, maybe I will not stay here tonight after all. Okay. Are you all right, sir? Uh, yes. I'm sorry to bother you. Have a good night. Well, that was strange. Sorry I'm late. Is something wrong? No, just a strange guy came in to get a room, but left when I asked him his name. Uh, sometimes I wonder if applying for the later shift was the best idea. Tell me about it. We get the weirdest people around here at night. You want some coffee before you hit the road? No, thanks. My nerves are a little fried. Weird guy, right. Well, at least it's better than being completely dead. You had enough time to finish all your homework? Just about. Guess that means it's my time to take up the desk. Eep! What is it? <laughs> oh, that skeleton? Yeah, Daniel started decorating for Halloween already. When I was seven, I saw this horror movie with my older brother where these skeletons rose out of the ground. Ever since then, they've scared the hell out of me. Maybe you could take it down? Nah, I need to grow up and get over it. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I better leave before it gets any darker. See you later. Goodbye. Good morning, dear. You're up a little early. Are you hungry? Good morning. I'll have a little cereal, I guess. We have cornflakes and, I think, some Fruit Loops left from when my great-nephew visited last week. 
Are you sure you don't want an egg to go with it? It'll take a second. No, cornflakes are fine. I can get them if you want. Nonsense, dear. You have enough to worry about with school and work. The least I can do is pour you some cereal. I'm grateful that you let me stay here still. I feel like such a burden on you sometimes. Think nothing of it, Christine. After your father passed away, the least I could do was take you into my home. He was a dear friend of my husband's. And you were the sweetest little girl in the world. I was thrilled to have you come and live here. You've been wonderful company in my old age, you know that. I'm very grateful for everything you've done for me. I really will try to help with things more. Once I get a job that actually pays, I'll try to help with some of the bills. And I'll try to tidy up this place. Knock down some of the cobwebs and ugh, dust the windows. Don't worry about such silly things, Christine. We're fine here, you and I. You just get through school and cheer up, dear. Have some fun. You always look so darn sad. <sighs> I'll try to cheer up. Oh. Are you alright? Oh, just my arthritis acting up. It's nothing to worry about. I'll get you another spoon. Oh, thank you, dear. See what I mean? You are really a great help to me. Here you go. Oh, Christine, I forgot to tell you. I saved you a newspaper clipping I saw in yesterday's entertainment section. There's going to be a local theatre production here, and they need singers to try out. I thought you might be interested. You know I don't sing anymore. I can't carry a tune to save my life. Now that's ridiculous. You were always singing with your father and that, that cute little blonde-headed boy, oh... Raoul? Yes, Raoul. You were always singing with him while your father strummed away on the guitar. We even have an old recording of you three. And you had a lovely voice. You sang all throughout your school years. Why did you give it up so suddenly? I don't know. I got tired of it, I guess. I... I got older. Anyway, I better be going now. I'll be home after work around three to help with dinner. Oh, try to have a nice day, Christine. You too. I'm just glad we're getting any money at all. Have you seen some of the costumes? They're completely falling apart. It's still not that much of a donation. Not as big as the grant the state gave last year. Well, they certainly had enough to pay Charlotte's tuition. I'm paying full out-of-state fees. Did you know that she got everything paid for since her first year? She's not even that good. Her parents happen to be rich enough to give her lessons her entire life. Ugh, Charlotte. She thinks she's God's gift to the stage? Talk about conceited. Oh, hey Christine, do you want the rest of my fries? No thanks, Meg. <gasps> Ooh, I'll take them! <sighs> I guess talking about Charlotte made you lose your appetite. <sighs> I wish I could get a scholarship. It's not fair. There's not enough scholarships to go around, and then the undergoing students don't need them. It's okay, Sarah. Maybe if we get into showboat, we'll be able to rub elbows with some super wealthy people. If they even attend the show? It doesn't matter if they attend the show. It just matters if they donate to the show. I think Philip Chagney was thinking about it. I heard his father and grandfather went here for their undergraduate years. Philip Chagney? Isn't there a Chagney that owns several huge investment firms down in New York City? They had him on the news all the time, making predictions about what stocks would go up and go down. We even studied an article about him in Econ. Yeah, that's his son! The dad passed away this last year, and now Philip is taking over the company and the fortune. One of my theater professors said that he was looking into starting some scholarships here and donating some of the money to the school. He's supposedly really into the arts, which will be great for us. Philip Chagney. Does he have a younger brother? <laughs> Probably. They had a pretty big family. Why? I think I may have known him. Ral Chagney. When I was a kid, my dad gave him guitar lessons, and we used to hang out when he came to Vermont for the summer. You knew him that closely? Why'd you let him go? He could have paid your tuition. <laughs> <laughs> Meg. Anyway, when he was 11, he left for boarding school for a while. 
I think he stayed in New York after that. My... my dad died soon after, and... and I don't know. We kind of lost contact. Was he cute? I've heard that his brother is. Not to mention filthy rich. I haven't seen him for a while, but... I guess he was kind of cute. Maybe you'll run into him again. Maybe. But somehow I doubt that he'd even remember me. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message. 11.30. He's late. Sir, would you like another coffee? Ah, no thank you. I believe this is my fourth cup. You've been here since morning, haven't you? Did your date stand you up? Date? <laughs> no. I am simply waiting on an acquaintance. All right. Well, we're starting to get busy. So just holler if you need anything else. I will. Thank you, madame. I think childhood sweethearts are the cutest thing. It's so romantic. I don't know. All the boys I knew when I was a kid were snotty-nosed and gross. Yeah, same here. They also like to pull my hair, too. Ooh. That meant they liked you. <laughs> yeah, right. My brother pulled my hair, too. Christine, are you leaving? Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to leave for work soon. Okay, bye. Drive safe. It was nice to meet you. See you later. That girl looked familiar. Ah, the desk clerk from that hotel. That was very foolish, nearly giving out all my information. The last thing I need is a long paper trail. He would find out in an instant. <coughs> ah, hello, Mr. Bouquet. Yes, I I've been waiting for you. I, s I see. Well, that is unfortunate. Is there another time that we could meet? Yes. Let me write that down. Hold on. Very well. I'll see you then. I hope your back feels better. Goodbye. If I had a dollar for every time a guest left something in one of these rooms, I could retire a very wealthy man. Ah, oh, gross. Are those socks dirty? I hope not. I touched them. Well, into lost and found they go, along with this very well-used pacifier. So, Christine, how's business been these past few weeks? I guess about right for this time of year. Not a lot of guests, but it's never empty either. I'm a little thankful. It gives me a good excuse to study. Well, what are you studying right now? Um, the psychology of education. Sounds interesting. Is it for your major? Yeah, it's not really my thing, but I need to read it for class. I understand. Well, business will pick up as soon as Thanksgiving gets here, which reminds me, will you be available to work that week? A lot of the others are heading out of town. Um, yeah, I'll be able to come in. I don't really leave town much. Um, I'd like some time off around Christmas, though. My, uh, my friend hasn't been feeling well, and I'd like to... Well, say no more, Christine. You come in during Thanksgiving, and I'll make sure you have the first pick of days around Christmas. Thanks, Daniel. Not a problem. Just tell me what days you want off a little bit early. That time of year is always hectic, especially with all the travelers that get stranded out here. Yeah, I understand. Excuse me, it'll just be a second. Uh, I need to go check on one of the broken heaters. Tell me if the maintenance guy calls. Okay, thanks again. What are you looking at, bonehead? Hmm, what did you say? Oh, um, nothing. I was just talking to your skeleton friend on the wall there. Oh, I got that down at Walmart for five bucks last year. I thought I'd give the place a nice festive feel. You don't think it scares the guests away, do you? Oh, that must be the repair guy. Hello, Paula Hotel. Huh? Oh, yes, I'll get her. Uh, for you. Me? Um, all right. Hello? Hi, Christine. This is she. Yes, dear. This is your neighbor from downstairs, Miss Romero. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I have some very bad news. Miss Valeris tripped coming down the stairs today and broke her leg. She's in the hospital right now, but I told her I would give you a call. Oh no. How bad is it? 
I really don't know Christine. I can give you her room number, though, and you can go see her. She also asked if you would go home first and get her purse for her. You know, a woman in her condition really shouldn't be on the second floor. I... What's the room number? Oh, 376. Thanks. I'll get up there as soon as I can. All right, then. Let me know how she is. I will. Goodbye, dear. Bye. Bad news? Yeah. My my guardian broke her leg on the stairs. She's in the hospital. It's a slow afternoon. I'll take over the last two hours of your shift. Oh, thank you so much. I'll get going then. Bye. <sighs> it's been 15 minutes. If Mr. Bouquet doesn't show up today, I won't try again. <sighs> Perhaps I should give up looking for him altogether. Mr. Nadir Khan. Yes. Mr. Joseph Bouquet, I presume? That would be me. Can I get you anything, sir? Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. Sir, are you finished with your muffin? Yes, thank you. Sorry I was late. Had to take my granddaughter to her karate lessons. <laughs> you should see her punches. I think she'll be ripe for the bureau one of these days. That is fine. I would like to hear anything you know. Any information you have would be wonderful. Right down to business, I see. Well, we first heard of some strange things back in the mid-90s. Just rumors, of course. Supposedly some guy had snuck over from Europe and had some connections with, well, you know. Fairly hostile people back in your country. He had done some secretive work for them, you might say. Though exactly what projects he was involved in remained unclear. Go on. We investigated it a little bit, but found nothing of interest. There were sightings of a guy in a mask that matched the ones given to us by the French authorities, but nothing solid. A couple of strange bank accounts opened up along the East Coast, but they were closed up before we could take a closer look. Then it was rumored that... Is this all you have? Sightings and rumors? You have nothing else? Nothing substantial? Sir, you have to understand that we get a ton of strange cases coming through every day. There's supposedly a guy from Russia that's been spying here since the 70s. Another guy supposedly has a suitcase with a nuclear bomb in it. Hell, we had a whole drawer devoted to people who thought they saw Hitler walking down the street. Most of these phantom people don't exist. And we don't have time to fully investigate everything. I can fully assure you that this man does exist in the flesh and blood. He is more than a rumor, sir. Maybe he does. You seem to know more about him than anyone else does. Why not take this to the police or the FBI if you're so concerned? I don't wish to discuss my motives, sir. Do you have anything else of interest for me? If not, this meeting might as well be over. If I had access to a computer at headquarters, I could probably find you more. That's one of the drawbacks of being a retired agent. You don't get access to anything interesting anymore. <laughs> it seems, if I remember right, there was an archived interview with an Iranian figurehead that had some pretty strange stuff in it. Normally, it would be hell to get into the files, but I could pull some strings. No promises, though. I would greatly appreciate that. I would also be willing to compensate you, if you find anything of use. <sighs> Anyhow, it's time for me to move on. You know how to reach me if you uncover anything of interest. I'll take a look for you, sir. Usually I wouldn't bother, but you seem like you know something. <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't want to be responsible for some catastrophe that could have been prevented by helping you out. Have a good day, sir. It appears that I'm in for another fruitless search. My old friend, it seems nothing will pull you out of hiding. All nurses to the nurses' station. Uh, excuse me, could you point me to room 376? Just continue down this hallway. It'll be on the left. Thank you. Blue. 
Christine, please don't cry. Papa, I don't know if I can do this. Please don't leave me alone. You won't be alone, Christine. I'll always be with you. I'll just be watching from above. Whenever you sing with your God-given voice, I'll be there. And one day, one day you'll shine for all the world to see. Christine, hello dear. I'm glad you were able to get here so fast. I'm just so glad you're okay. I wish I'd been there to help you. I'll allow you some privacy now, Mrs. Valerius. We'll have the test results in tomorrow, and I'll discuss them with you at that time. Test results? Oh, they just wanted to do a quick bone scan. What with the terrible pain I've been having lately, I'm sure it's nothing more than my arthritis. Oh. Well, I suppose I'm getting on in years. There's bound to be an accident sooner or later when you're my age. Yeah, I guess so. I'm still sorry that I wasn't there to help you down the stairs. Anyway, I'll help out a lot more while you're off your feet. I think my boss will let me work fewer hours for a while, and, and classes won't be as busy after midterms. I should be able- Christine, I don't want you to worry about me. I know, but I- Please let me finish. Before I get too old, I would like to see you happy again. It's events like these that make me see how short life really is, and you shouldn't spend it miserably. Ever since your father passed, you've seemed almost like a ghost, always staring into space with a vacant look in your eyes and hardly saying a word to anyone. I'm not miserable. I'm fine. I, I know that you're fine, Christine. But I wish you could be happy. Find some friends. Go out on a date sometime. All you do is work, study and sleep and... Your face always lit up so much when you sang, Christine. Have you ever thought maybe you could find joy in that again? I... I... I am happy. I mean, I do have a couple of friends in school. Guys aren't all that interested in me, but I'm busy most of the time anyway. You are a hard worker, there is no doubt in my mind of that. But for once I'd like to see a real smile on your face. Christine, bring me my purse. Do you know what this is? No. It's the last tape I have of you and your father singing together. I think you had just turned 15. Oh, I had... I had forgotten. I found it when I was helping to go through some of your father's things. And I've kept it with me all these years, wanting to give it to you. I had a friend make a copy yesterday so I could keep one too. Thanks. Hi, sorry to interrupt, but visiting hours are now over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be out in a second. Ah, <sighs> listen to it sometime, Christine. Listen to how good you are. I think you'll be surprised. And if not singing, please, please find something that makes you happy again. I will. Have a good night. doesn't understand. Why does everyone want to change me? Smile. Open up more. I'm fine with how things are. I'm fine. Aren't I? I don't have time to think about the past. I don't need to find new friends. I... <sighs> I'm pathetic. I'm pathetic. Uh, are you ready, Christine? I'm ready. <gasps> His voice.
Where am I? I don't think I've ever driven on this road before. Why are there hardly any street lamps? What is that on the side of the road? An animal? Oh, it's just an old man jogging. Ugh, this tape is a driving hazard. I gotta turn it off. Where the hell did this car come from? They don't even have their lights on. It's driving way too close to me and the jogger is right there. Oh, shit! What's it trying to do? It's gonna make me hit that guy! I, I have to get out of the way! Shall we go for one more, Christine? Yeah, I have time for one more. Is that your voice? What? Is that your voice? Stay awake. You have only a concussion. I can't. You will, if you want to survive the night. It would be a pity for such a voice to come to a needless end. I gotta get up. <laughs> Remain lying down, Christine. Seeing me will certainly do you no good. <laughs> Merely a passerby. No one of any concern to you. Please, I... I need to get out. I... I, I need help. My, my car is stuck down here, and, and... And I need to call someone. Sir? You are fortunate tonight. Your voice has saved you. Over here! Someone is still inside the vehicle! Hello there, miss. How are you feeling? We'll get you out of here in a minute. We have a young woman down here. She appears to be fully conscious, but go ahead and bring down the stretcher. Are you experiencing any pain and numbness? My head hurts a lot. I think I rammed it against the window when my car hit a bump. Are you feeling dizzy? Any vision problems? Yeah, I'm a little dizzy. Where did he go? Where did who go? Was someone riding with you? No, the person who was here a second ago. We'll get you out of here in a second. Can you give me a name? Christine Daye. But where did he go? There's no one here, Christine. You may have imagined it while you were shortly unconscious. Tell me if you see any other strange things, though, okay? Try to stay awake. I'm going to ask you a few questions about your medical history. Okay. It seems so real, though. So very real.
You're an old fool, Nadir. Jumping at sounds and shadows. <laughs> ah. Oh, just a roach. This motel is filthy. But at least I didn't have to use my real name. The spokesperson for the White House says that the president is going to attend the three road talks, but the United States will not back down from its stance on North Korean nuclear activity. Victor? Thank you for that report from Washington, Amy. Be sure to keep us updated on how events there progress. And now for our topical story. Police are searching for a missing Burlington man tonight. Described as Caucasian and standing about six foot tall and 220 pounds. Here's his picture up on the screen. Oh no. 60 year old Joseph Bouquet was last seen by his wife around 6.30 Monday evening. Right before he went out on an evening jog. When he didn't come home that night, a search immediately began. So far, no evidence has been found to explain his disappearance. Joe always comes home by eight. He's never late coming home, and he would have called me if he had trouble. Was he suffering from any sort of illness? No. Joe is very healthy. He exercised every night and was rarely ever sick. Do you have any idea at all where he may possibly be? No. Something has happened to him. He wouldn't leave without a word. There has been some speculation that Mr. Bouquet's strong ties to the FBI have made him a target for criminals. But the police have assured us that there's no proof to suggest this as of yet. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the number at the bottom of the screen. We'll keep you updated on any further developments concerning Mr. Bouquet. Next on Channel 9 News, a report on how to keep your children safe. <sighs> I suppose that's another name I must delete from my contacts. So, you think you had some sort of supernatural experience? Don't stare at me like I'm insane. It's not like I was completely conscious at the time. I'm just saying that the whole thing was really strange. Like, like being in a dream. No, I don't think you're insane. It's interesting, I guess. My father's guitar was playing in the background and then that... That, that voice starts speaking to me from above. I can't really remember everything now, but I do remember that someone was talking to me. I wasn't alone out there that night. Maybe you weren't alone. It's just that when I first talked to you, during the night you stayed at the hospital, you made the whole thing sound kind of creepy. A cold hand? Someone forcing you to stay inside of the car? That's a little weird. I was hysterical that night, Meg. After everything that had happened, I barely knew what I was talking about. It kept me awake when I had the concussion, though. And, and did I tell you what the voice said to me right before it left? What? It said that my voice had saved me. It was like some kind of sign. That, and the cassette. Ever since that night, I felt so peaceful. Even with Mrs. Valeria still in the hospital, I feel like everything's going to be okay. How long will she be in there? Have they gotten any results back? No, no one will tell me anything. I think something may be wrong, though. I'm sorry, Christine. I'm sure everything will be fine. And you're welcome to stay at my house for as long as you want. There's plenty of room for you here, and my parents have always considered you a good influence on me. Maybe... They'll stop trying to force me to move out. Thanks, Meg. I'll try to go, though, once my head stops aching. I swear that I went through a bottle of Tylenol the other day. The dizziness is about gone, at least. I can't stay too long, or the apartment will completely fall apart. Whatever you feel like. I'm guessing you can't drive yet? No. Even if I were well enough, two of my tires are completely deflated and something came loose in the engine. I probably have to replace my bumper, too. It's going to take a while to get it repaired. I'll give you a ride when I can. <sighs> You're really not having a good month, Christine. Talk about bad luck. Tell me about it. Hey, Meg? Yeah? 
Do you think there really could have been something with me when I had the accident? Like a ghost or spirit of some kind? I mean, it disappeared so fast and its voice didn't seem human. I really don't know. My grandma says that she's seen angels, and I have a friend at Yale who swears that a ghost lives in her uncle's house. So maybe there are things out there that can't be explained. Yeah. What are you looking at? Oh, the flyer for showboat. Yeah, I think I'm going to get involved. A lot of my friends are. Even if I don't get a part, maybe they'll let me do scenery or something. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make it, Meg. Do you happen to have an extra flyer? Sure. I was helping to hand them out at the student union, so I have stacks of them. Why? Are you planning on getting involved with it? It should be fun, even if you're not in the actual performance. Maybe. After that night, I feel so different. I feel like I was given a sign of some kind. I feel like... Like what? Like I'm not alone anymore. Hello? Hello, Christine. Mrs. Valerius, hi, how are you? I am fine. How are you? I'm sorry you're all alone in that apartment. How is your poor head? I'm doing well. My head doesn't hurt too much now, and I finally started classes again yesterday. The doctor said it was a minor concussion. Is everything okay there? There is a little bit of a problem, Christine. The results of the test came back yesterday, and the scan revealed some problems with my bones. What? What do you mean? What kind of problems? Um, honey... Honey, they think that I may have a tumour in my bones. I thought the pain was the arthritis acting up, but the scans showed that it may be something else. I'm so sorry. How bad do they think it is? Well, they don't know yet, Christine. They're taking more tests and should be able to tell in a couple of days. But please don't worry too much about me, dear. They have plenty of stuff to treat this kind of thing nowadays. I'll just be stuck in this dreary place for a little while. I'll, I'll visit a lot. Please call me as soon as you know what the test results are. I want to know how everything is. Is... is there anything I can bring you? Oh dear, I'm absolutely fine here. You try to keep the apartment up and running. Make sure that that heater is still working. Also, if you see the landlord, tell him that the two back burners on the stove are acting strangely. But otherwise, try to keep up with your schoolwork. Don't worry about me. <laughs> you know that I will. I wish you could come home. Me too, dear. I'll come home as soon as I can. Now, is there anything else you want to tell me? One of the nurses is here, so I may need to go in a second. No. Well... Actually, there is kind of something. I... I may try out for that musical. The one you were talking about. I doubt I'll make it, but I thought it might be fun. We'll see. Oh, that's wonderful. Christine, I knew that cassette would help you clear your head a bit. Tell me how everything goes. Your father would be proud to hear this news. Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, dear. You've certainly made my day better. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Good night. And take care. Good night, dear. <laughs> Dad. Dad, please don't take her away from me, too. I can't be this alone. Please, give me some sign that you're still there. Help me. Hello? Ugh, now you're imagining things. Get it together, Christine. Before you go completely insane. Meg! 
bag. That skirt is completely wrinkled. Why on earth didn't you run an iron over it? It looks like you just plucked it out of a hamper. It looks fine, Mom. It was all I had this morning. There are going to be celebrities involved. I would hate to see you not get the role for unprofessionalism. I really wish my mother was not involved in this. She seems to suck the fun out of everything. I'm 19, and she still is on me about what I wear. What exactly is she doing here? You said she used to dance? Yeah. She used to be in a New York dance company before she met my dad. Now she volunteers with things like this, helping to organize them and stuff. I think she misses the stage sometimes. You girls have about 20 minutes to spare before auditions. But you may as well go ahead and find the room. I need to speak to some people. Something wrong, Mom? This event is so disorganized, it's going to be a miracle if they pull it off without any disasters. Not so loud. Christine and I would like to at least have a shot of getting a roll. I'm not being loud, Meg. You girls get going. I'll meet you out here later. Thank God she's gone. She can be so anal about things like this. Everything has to be perfect. Yeah, where do we go? This way. I can feel myself getting more nervous by the minute. Tell me about it. I have no idea what I'm even doing here. There's no way I'm going to make it without some sort of divine intervention. Maybe your ghost in the woods will give you a hand. (laughs) I'm sure you'll do fine, Christine. Christine Day, number 254 for the role of Magnolia. Uh, Christine Daye? Yes. What are you going to be singing today, Christine? Someone to watch over me. Or, if that's not okay, I can sing- No, no. It's fine. Not a very creative choice, but whatever. Go ahead. There's a somebody I bothered to see. I hope that he turns out to be someone to watch over me. I'm a little lamb who's lost in the world. That's enough. Thank you. We'll let you know how it comes out. Ah, okay. Thanks. And a no for that one. Let's see. The only girl with a powerful enough voice was number 175. Although I hear she's not the most amiable of people, she's at least properly trained. Well, thank God that's over. I would suggest putting Miss Dae back on the list. There is no need to turn around, sir. Just do as I tell you, and you will be fine. Who are you? Put Miss Dae back on the list. I I can't! Her voice isn't trained. I'll be fired if she gets on that stage. Why do you care? Who the hell are you? You won't be fired. Besides, I can think of worse consequences. If you don't put her name down for the last time, do as I tell you. There! Very good, sir. I trust that you will keep our little conversation private. I I will. Now who the hell are... Where... Did he go? Of Threnodies and Roses. This ends episode one. Next episode. Make Believe.